Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Dr. Jorge Wong, trustee and clinical faculty at the Pacific Graduate School of Psychology at Palo Alto University. Dr. Wong has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Jorge, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So when we're talking about engaging minds and improving lives, what does that mean? How is that given life at Palo Alto University? Engaging minds and improving lives. From what I see, engaging minds means sharing what psychology is, not only to the master students, but also to the doctorate and even the undergraduates, and really having the students understand how psychology gets infused throughout life, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in uh, the business sector, whether it's in HR, everywhere you go, psychology has something to do with what everyday life is. Uh, I think having people understand that psychology can be very helpful to improve people's lives. I think that's how we're trying to not only teach what psychology can do in regards to the mechanics, but also how it actually um, gets expressed or get uh, seen when somebody's life improves, whether the life conditions improve, they learn about themselves, their situation improves. I think that's what the engaging minds and improving lives means to me. So what is the distinction between anthropology and psychology? Both are about the studies of behaviors, but they are different. Mm, very good question. Um, to me, anthropology is looking at how people do their traditions, come together, uh, and practice in a way that it's collectively identifying who they are. I think to me, psychology also not only looks at the group's dynamic as a whole, but also looks at the individual, how they're thinking, how the external uh, expectations for culture, language, and how mores are impacts that individual and how the individual take all those in decides how do they interact with the outside and make something unique for themselves as well as also being part of the whole company. In a sense, isn't it, isn't it the group, how the group relates to the individual and psychology is, is about how the individual relates to other individuals and the group? Yes and no, I would say it, it depends because psychology can also look at the large group dynamics. They can look at how populations move, how populations think. Uh, people talk about behavioral economics, how people thinking about tackling the business market as compared to somebody really experiencing some distress and discomfort in their own personal lives and how do they deal with it. Even though they may have siblings, family members, people around them, they may deal with it slightly differently, and is, which is much more meaningful to them. So psychology goes from the big to the individual, from the individual to the larger groups. It's quite dynamic, I would say. And we bandy the word around so often. We talk about uh, psychology in terms of economics, in terms of business, in terms of the deal, mm -hmm. the psychology in terms of, of waiting f as an applicant for the response the psychology of the interviewer talking to the interviewee or the interviewee being interviewed. We, we sort of toss these, these terms around without ever thinking. And you have a university that is dedicated to this ubiquitous concept, this thing that is really about our behavior and our feelings and our responses to sensory uh, inputs. Mm -hmm. And you've shaped this, this organization and you're now serving on the board. Why do you spend your time your very scarce time, not only professionally teaching, but also uh, serving on the board and and kind of doubling down mm -hmm. on, on this professional, but now also volunteer activity. Uh, one thing that I, you didn't mention is that I'm also an alumnus from the school. Ah. So I feel that the education that I got here was very valuable. It actually gave me a lot of opportunities to really do what I really love to do, which is to help people improve their life's condition. So when I had the opportunity to teach a bit, I took it uh, in the sense that uh, I feel that what I got it was something that I can hopefully give back and also make somebody's training much better. And later on when I got invited to be on the board of trustees, I thought it was a great honor that the president thought that I may contribute from an alumnus perspective as well as from somebody who's on the ground teaching some of these students that we're trying to really hold such as teams to help, kind of represent us once they actually graduate. So um, that's why I feel that it's a great honor for me to give back. Talk about your own trajectory. How did you come to Palo Alto University? Where did you, where did you grow up? Uh, I was born in Cuba, Chinese parents. I grew up in San Francisco. Uh, went to Santa Cruz for undergraduate and then uh, worked a little bit with uh, gang prevention and family 
uh, therapy in, in San Francisco. Gang, gang prevention. Correct, gang prevention. Okay. Uh, and then I felt that I needed to get a doctorate degree, a higher degree, and I was debating between a master's degree versus a doctorate degree. And the joke at one point was that, well, what's a couple more years? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Ply was lucky enough to be accepted at uh, Palo Alto University or Pacific Graduate School of Psychology at that time. Uh, and I feel that I got a great education, uh, a lot of training, a lot of exposure, a lot of connections to be able to come back and say, I think I got, a, for for the for the buck, I got a great bang for the buck. So it's it's a very interesting trajectory because as opposed to a purely academic track, you receive your your degree, your undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. You then are working um, on on gang prevention, which is is really street level work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're 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 really interacting with people who um, are going through. Uh, both traumas, the siren call of joining a group, of being part, but also the violence that can attach to that. Right. And at a certain point, you, you, you're saying, well, wait a second, I need to, I need more, I need more. And then you came here, and did you find more initially? Did you, w when you were here, did you, did you feel like you actually found what you were looking for? And what was that thing that you found? I think it's a great question, because I've thought about this quite a bit, and people ask, why didn't you pursue a master's degree? Uh, master being a much shorter, sometimes you're more- An MSW, efficient. you know, those, uh, which MFT are great degrees. Something, yeah. um, so my, my wife is an MSW, and she does great work with the population that she works with. Mm -hmm. But I always felt that there's something else, what makes the individuals tick? Whether they actually go into a, a delinquent group, or they have challenges, or how do people overcome uh, some of the, the adversities that are presented in life, given that I also were able to see that these individuals had skills and innate abilities to, to gather people, to lead. Why couldn't they be convinced possibly or share or show a different way of doing things? So my curiosity as to what makes people tick and how, what can I do to help them pivot or change slightly in their trajectory to so do something So what's happening positive. inside of them? What's happening, how they're thinking about it, how they're feeling about it, how they're choosing to do certain things. Uh, and I think a, a PhD was able to give me more of that detailed analysis and even teaching me how to design uh, experiments or studies to really assess that and measure it in a way that it could be replicatable once again. So, Talk about the Cook County Department of Correction. Um, largest single jail site in the country, holds about 10,000 detainees in and out. Uh, it was a great place to do my internship. Uh, I was able to get exposed to many different levels of, um, I guess, cr criminal behaviors and also looking at people who are really, um, they could have been there uh, because of many institutional and societal discrimination issues. It could have been like the wrong identity. A lot of that, the forensic and the correctional mental health aspect was great. And also providing healthcare services within the jail um, site was actually very good. The interface between healthcare, mental health care, and the judicial and correctional system was quite interesting. Uh, so it gives you a whole different way of how humans survive in, in situations that they don't have much opportunities to, to do things. And the clinical setting, if you can call it that, is very constrained because mm -hmm. of the circumstances in which you are operating. Right. Uh, you have all sorts of issues that you have to think about, uh, you know, ranging from the fact that the people who you are interacting with are themselves, they, they themselves are incarcerated, they feel uh, constrained, um, and that shifts the dynamic you have to worry about your own personal safety. You, there, these, these environments are very procedural so that there are certain things that you can do in these environments and certain, certain things that are almost impossible to do. How, how has that informed how you have seen the profession? <clears throat> um, I, I do agree there's a lot of limitations as to what one can do within a correctional setting because everything's controlled. Uh, but I think also it allowed me to really use my learning and also my experience to put it all together to come up with creative ways or innovative ways to address the needs of the detainees inside the jail. And I think the learning that I got from school in regards to the scientific component, as well as my own cultural uh, heritage and, and some of the experience that I brought into that particular internship helped me put it all together to hear what the individual in jail had to say about things. And of course, everybody's saying, I'm not guilty, I'm still fighting for my situation and my life, but I think being able to connect on the human side, uh, we're not there to really uh, make any judgment about their 
legal situation, but really address their mental health needs. And in terms of the, the, the work that you have uh, continued to do here at Palo Alto University, when you came back to do some, some teaching, um, what kind of, of work did you want to do as someone who now was going to cultivate the next generation? of young professionals. Mm -hmm. um, my experience working in corrections and now that I work in the community nonprofit uh, behavioral health sector, I want to bring psychology from the community into what is taught here in the academic setting. I think uh, there's a huge need to train psychologists to work with the public sector because the public is changing, whether it's demographic, whether it's language, whether it's culture. I think there's a lot of uh, richness and knowledge that psychologists can do to improve the outpatient or the public mental health system. So I think I want to bring that component in and also help psychology trainees uh, for the future to see that it's not just about one person inside of their head, but also how in their system and society, all that comes into play to make an individual choose or do what it is that they are actually doing. So in a sense, you're not just looking at psychology, you're also looking at social forces. Mm -hmm. You're looking at economic forces, you're looking at circumstances, personal circumstances of an individual. You might be looking at their race, their religion, their, their gender as, as part of, of, of your approach. Is this typical of how Palo Alto University faculty and how the university itself um, approaches the field of psychology? I think that's one of the great things that faculty here that have lots of experience and opportunities and knowledge bring to the students. It's not just about book learning and what we read in the journals, but also how they have gone through it and bring their life experience and their training into the program. Uh, I think having a lot more outside faculty also teaching who are practicing also brings in a nice balance between the clinical aspects mm -hmm. as well as the academic research aspect. In terms of, of students that come in, they they come in, they do, if they do their undergraduate work and they go into their, either their master's track or their PhD track, uh, talk about where those students end up uh, tending toward. Are they mostly focused on direct service? Are they mostly focused on a, a, an academic track? Or do they want to go and design the next app and make a zillion dollars for the, the next psychology app where we are in Silicon Valley? Mm -hmm. Um, where, where do these students, in entering, where do they, where do they want to head, mm -hmm. and where do they evolve toward heading? I think what I've seen, a lot of students come in with a certain idea of what they want to do, and then once they get exposed to the greatness of what psychology is, whether at the master's level or the doctoral level, their horizons expand. I've seen people who graduate and actually go and work for an agency or for the public health sector. I've seen people who teach, do research, they become faculty. I've seen a few people who've designed some apps uh, in regards to what it is that they want to do. So it, there's lots of opportunities for people to do. I think having the knowledge base, the skill, and the ability to critically think how to solve a problem that is presented in front of you is what the greatness of a doctoral um, program actually allows you to do. Now, you've been associated with the university for quite some time. Talk mm -hmm. about how you've seen the, the institution change over the years since you were a student. Uh, <laughs> that's lots of changes. Uh, the faculty has grown, the so programs have grown. When you were here, how large was, was the footprint for Palo Alto University? And it was, at that point, the Pacific Graduate School of Psychology. Um, when I came back in 92, 93, it was only one building over at 935 East Meadow and three classrooms and uh, about a couple of couple hundred students. And a couple of offices and a couple offices and then they purchased a building across the street and over time they, they got bigger and all of a sudden now we have a campus with or multiple campuses and multiple degrees which sometimes uh, shocks me because in a very short time you went from a professional graduate doctoral program to a university so nowadays I meet people and they say, I'm an alumni from uh, Palo Alto University. And I'm thinking, wow, you look really young for a doctoral degree. And I always forget that we also have undergraduate degrees, master's, and, and doctoral degree. So I, I'm pretty proud of it, at how the trajectory in 40 years uh, has reached to this point. And, and what do you think the next, let's say, not 40 years, but the next 10 years holds? Um, I think our faculty is great. I think our students are, are 
high quality. And I'm hoping that with everything put together, we could be not only a small institution, but a small institution that has a huge impact in the 21st century. I think being in the heart of Silicon Valley, being in California, it's, uh, it's, it sets us up to be the leader in psychology for the, the rest of the world. And I think with a lot of these international programs that we have developed, we do have the opportunity to really make an impact, improve lives across the world, if you want to put it that way. There are a lot of for-profit universities that are getting into this sort of professional school space with many mixed results. Talk about the essential difference between an organization like Palo Alto University that is taking students uh, coming out of community college um, having them complete the last two years of an undergraduate degree and then putting them on a track um, toward a uh, master's or, or a PhD or, or even toward a, a job. Mm -hmm. Talk about the difference between Palo Alto University and its values and a for-profit organization and its values. I would say the for-profits, uh, bottom line, is always the, the key thing. Uh, Paul, to be a nonprofit and understanding that there's a lot of challenges for people to complete their education, I think the leadership here at Palo Alto has decided to help people complete the education, knowing that if you can complete an education at a school that has given you the opportunity, there's a possibility that the individual might actually improve in regards to their outlook and job opportunities, socioeconomic status, and even decide to pursue a higher degree. There's a lot of um, uh, individuals who have challenging life circumstances, uh, whether they're adults or younger or ethnic minorities. Oftentimes, higher education is not something that they think about, at least for me. An example, my parents always wanted me to go to college, and after that, they have no clue what else to do. All they knew was education was a vehicle to actually improve your life and your lifestyle and your socioeconomic status. So in pursuing a master's or even a doctorate degree is something that is almost unheard of. But if there's a school that can set a path and tell you this is what you can do if you focus and you work hard and get the grace and you're qualified to do it, why not do it? Why not achieve the highest degree that you could in education and see what opportunities there lie for you in, in, in in life. What I find also so interesting is how multicultural and how diverse this this uh, this university is. Have you seen that, has that been a continued value or has that been a value that has developed over the years that you've been associated with, with the university? Um, over the years, as the years have grown, I see more diversity. Uh, although psychology is still not seen as a uh, mainstream kind of degree for a lot of the ethnic minority students, I think uh, recruitment effort has gone out to really bring in quality faculty to really highlight and showcase what it is that we are trying to do. And I think with some of the other programs internationally is really uh, a testament to what the university is trying to do, not only locally, but also globally. If you were to say, in summary, one thing about Palo Alto University, about why somebody should bet their career on Palo Alto University as a faculty member, mm -hmm. as an administrator, as a student, what would you say about Palo Alto University? Because you have actually done this. You, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're you're right there, and and uh, you know you're 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 now taking your precious free time and you're mm -hmm. you're attending board meetings. I would say that Palo Alto University is it's like a diamond in the rough has not quite been discovered. And I think once people get involved and be part of this policy university culture, once they're done and once they're going through the whole process, and even students that go to internships or outside practicum training, people keep saying, that's a Palo Alto person, given the quality of clinical skills that they have, the knowledge, the ability to get things done on time. There's a certain culture, there's a certain idea, there's a certain ethics, there's a certain moral that we're trying to instill. And I think hopefully it is transfused throughout all levels of the organization. And I think if you are to come to Palo Alto, hopefully you'll be able to take that and see for the time that you invest here, the money that you invest here, in the long run will actually bring you much more. Because happiness is not about how much money you make, sometimes how much lives you can actually improve and help. So hopefully you can get credits to go upstairs. <laughs> so it's not about the 40 years of accomplishments only, it's also about the potential, the great potential, that can even exceed this university's past. Correct. Jorge Wong, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Thank you so much for sharing your passion for Palo Alto University with us, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.